one of the ways in which we read Scripture is that all the Old Testament stories, the accounts we read in the Old Testament, the history, the historical narratives, and so forth, are to be understood, yes, as history, as a historical account, but more importantly is that they speak and teach about New Testament things. So they, they teach us about Jesus Christ. They teach us about the Catholic, faith, the Catholic Church, the sacraments in, in prophetic mystery and allegory and symbols and everything else. So when we, all, the, all these historical accounts give us that, there's that, that depth there that you may not catch if you're simply just reading it you know, simply for its historicalness, just for the story itself. I mean, this is exactly what St. Paul says, right? He says that Hagar and Sarah are are analogous of the New Testament and the Old Testament. We'll start with 21. Paul says, tell me, you that desire to be under the law, have you not read the law? All right. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one born of a bondwoman and the other by a free woman. Okay, here's St. Paul. Condemning the Galatians because they have been kind of bewitched, as he says, or deceived by specific, uh, certain type of Jewish Christians that would come in and try to impose the old law onto the Catholics at the time, saying that in order to be saved, they must keep the Mosaic law. And he says, let me, let me give you, let me give you an, let me teach you something. You, you individuals that want to, that want to keep the Mosaic law in order to save your souls. Let me teach you something here. Let me show you the story of Sarah, of Sarah and Hagar, Ishmael and Isaac. Hear this, hear this Old Testament story, and learn a lesson from it. Learn and learn and learn a spiritual truth of what's taking place. You have Ishmael, who was who was a bond servant, who was born of a bond servant, who was not born f- free to the promise. He was born uh, as a, as a servant without without the hope of inheritance. And then you have the you have. Isaac, who was born of the promise, born of the prop of the of the of the of the wife of Abraham, who was given the promise to of inheritance. Now, has basically Saint Paul's going to say these two are as or an allegory. The story is an allegory. Why is that? And he's going to get into the details. He says, "For these are two testaments." He says in verses twenty-four, the one from Mount Sinai, engendering unto bondage, and the other, that which is Agar. For Sinai is a mountain in Arabia, which hath affinity to that Jerusalem, which is which now is, and is in bondage with her children. So, it says, she says, Hagar, who is the bondwoman, who Ishmael was born from, represents Sinai, which, if you're familiar, Sinai is where Moses received the law. Okay? Moses really lost. She represents Sinai. She represents the Jerusalem which is. The Jerusalem which is now. In Paul's time, is talking about the Jewish people who are under, who are serving the law and reject the Messiah. Right? They represent Jerusalem in that dead, that dead religion, that false and dead religion in which cannot bring salvation, which rejects the Messiah, they represent that that law and that system of religion is a, is a bondage. It keeps you in bondage, and does not bring salvation and whatnot. Right? It says that that Hagar, that particular individual, represents that. Right? It says, but that Jerusalem which is above in verse twenty six. It says, but that Jerusalem which is above is free, which is our mother. Right, so that Jeru- the Jerusalem above, which is free as our mother, is represented in Sarah and her son uh, Isaac. For verse twenty-seven, it says, "For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren, 
that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For many are the children of the desolate more than her that hath a husband. So he quotes of the time in which the Gentiles uh, will be brought in. He says, verse 28, Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of the promise. All right, Why are we, we are the children of the promise. As Isaac is the child of the promise, right? She, the, the promise was made to Sarah that she shall receive a son, a miraculous birth, you know, way after the time of her age, of her age. That Isaac is that promised child. Well, well, if we if we accept Christ and follow His faith and His church, then we are children of the promise. But if we decide to put ourselves in bondage to the old law, we are children of Hagar. That's what Paul's saying. We're children of Hagar. It says, but as then he, this is verse twenty nine. But as then he, Ishmael, that was born according to the flesh, right? Not out of, not according to the promise, just born the way everyone is born. It says, persecuted him that was after the spirit. So also it is now. So here it says that that Ishmael, Ishmael, persecuted. Isaac. Now this is a reference to a particular account that took place where Sarah saw Ishmael and it says playing with Isaac and she quickly retorted and said this cast out this bondwoman and her son for she shall not have inheritance with me. And Abraham was was sad by this. But the idea of playing here is, is a mockery, is some kind of persecutive act uh, so what we see so he says that even back then we can see the parallel that you have Ishmael persecuting mocking whatever coming against the promised child which is Isaac so those who are bond servants who are enslaved persecuting those who have the promise he says as it was back then with 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 those that were outside the promise, persecuting those of the promise. It is the same way today, he says. Right? So he says, so also it is now. Here, so here we have this story. Okay? He says that you have two children. You have two children. Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael is born out of the promise, born as a slave. Born as a slave. Isaac was born by the woman of promise. It's the promised child born free. Okay, the, per, the the child who, and they said this one represents the one slave, the slave woman and her slave child represents Sinai and the law, which is enslavement, which pictures enslavement. It pictures those outside of the promise, outside of the church, enslaved and in bondage. And that's, he says, what Jerusalem is now. The ones that are trying to impose this Mosaic law on you, they are slaves and in bondage and outside the truth and outside the covenant. Okay. And just like they did back then in the, in the story of Ishmael persecuting Isaac, they are doing it today. But guess what? It says, cast out the bondwoman, right? That's this, this prophetic voice out of, out of Sarah. God speaking through Sarah at this account says to Abraham, he tells Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son for the son of the bondwoman shall not have shall not be an heir with my son. This, this is a prophetic, this is a prophecy that Sarah, Sarah speaks through in, 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 in seeing what is taking place by, this pers- by Ishmael persecuting Isaac. Abraham didn't catch it, didn't grasp it. He was saddened and God had to remind, God had to tell him that, that, that listen to Sarah's voice, hearken to her voice because what she's saying is for me. And this is what St. Paul's saying too. He's saying, look, Listen to the prophetic voice of Sarah in, in, this, in this text here, that those who are following that law and imposing that Mosaic law on you do not ha- are part of the bondwoman and there's no inheritance with them. They said, we are to cast out that bondwoman. And that's what Jerusalem is. That they're the bondwoman. That sh- they shall not have inheritance with, this, with, with the son of promise. And the Son of Promise is our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're gonna if you're gonna put on the shackles of, of of the bondage, then you have no inheritance in Jesus Christ. That's what you were to gain from the story. 
long time. That's one application to gain from the story that takes place there where Sarah casts out Hagar and Ishmael and they from 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 their from their family. And he cast them out when she cast them out. And Abraham was saddened by the event. This is what we learn there. That this is a mystery, a prophetic mystery that is taking place. Now, this is just one simple example that you can find all throughout Scripture. Paul just references this particular one because it suits his purpose to teach the Je- the Galatians who are being deceived by uh, by these Jewish Christians in order that they had to maintain the law to be saved. He uses this account to teach them that, but all of Scripture is like this. All of Scripture can be used in this particular manner to teach New Covenant truths. So, I thought uh, I thought this might. So I just wanted to talk about this that, that we can't simply shouldn't we shouldn't simply just read the scriptures as simple historical narratives. And just look at them like as a history book uh, that this is what took place. And, and, but no, but each story, although true history, yes, and happened, yes, this did happen. There's, it, it's recorded and put down for far purpose because there's a mystery hidden here teaching us about Christ in the new covenant that we just need to, you know, mind through in order to get its riches. Ave Maria.